Voilà, on vous entend. Vous entendez bon là Oui. So, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, session of the Mathematical Physics Seminar. And today we have the pleasure to welcome uh, Jürgen Mavres from Berlin who talk about Jewish Philippines from Stigel Maxim to Conformalities. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jeremy, for the introduction and the invitation. Thanks uh, for coming. Uh, so, yeah, I'll talk about uh, this joint and ongoing work actually with uh, Guillermo Bukainen, Rod, and Vargas. Uh, so, about basically going in the, on the topic of uh, the new wheel conformal theory. So, how we can uh, uh, interpret this in the framework of uh, Siegel axioms. Uh, and so, so, yeah, so just as a motivation and background, so in the, traditionally CFT, uh, had two approaches, I guess, so you can think of it as a path integral or uh, have an axiomatic approach. Uh, and um, well, in the axiomatic approach, then you you um, uh, you, you take the Pierre-Assault symmetry as the built-in principle of your theory, and then uh, what's going to be hard is to um, question the consistency. So here, in the probabilistic approach to UV theory that was formulated by uh, these people, we are actually working with a representation. And so the consistency in question is actually there's no consistency question because the model exists, but the, the, the axioms become theorems that we have to prove. And so this is the part. Uh, and so uh, in my opinion, I think that two approaches are somewhat complementary. And so this is kind of also the main goal of this talk is we see how the two approaches, uh, so the symmetry and the representation and, and the probabilistic representation can interact. Uh, and um, uh, and yeah, and so. Um, and so one, one interesting uh, aspect also is that usually the symmetry is formulated locally, uh, and then you have a representation of the Virasso algebra. But here what we were able to do is to uh, kind of exponentiate uh, the Virasso algebra and uh, have a, a representation actually of the more the conformal group and more specifically the semigroup of annuli, which is at the cornerstone of Siegel axioms. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so maybe just to make this a bit more concrete. Uh, so I first want to introduce uh, uh, Siegel axioms and particularly Siegel's uh, sim Siegel semigroup of annuli. Uh, and, and so uh, the Siegel uh, semigroup of annuli is a geometric object and in Siegel's point of view, uh, a conformal field theory will be constructed from predictive representations of this semigroup. So I first need to uh, introduce what is the semi-group, and then uh, uh, I will introduce the other key player, which is the Hilbert space on which we will have a representation of this uh, semi-group. But first, uh, I want to introduce the semi-group. So what is F? The semi-group is going to be um, a complex uh, annuli um, uh, with, uh, with analytically parameterized boundaries. So an address is just a sphere uh, with uh, two holes, two boundary, two disk moves, moves. Uh, and uh, I give an analytic parameterization of the boundary. And actually, what you want to do is to look at these things modulo uh, diffeomorphisms. So you identify uh, some modulo bipolomorphisms of your annuli. Uh, and so uh, these are equivalence classes of uh, Riemann surfaces. Uh, but so one thing that is uh, um, one fact is that you have a canonical represent uh, a nice representative of uh, of these uh, guides. Uh, so each uh, so, uh, just make uh, some sort of picture. Yes, exactly why I'm introducing representative. Each A uh, has the representative. Uh, which is given as follows. Uh, so we have F pin, uh, which is a conformal map from the disk uh, to uh, the complex plane. F out goes from the outside disk to the complex plane, or actually the Riemann sphere. Uh, and you remove uh, the two disks. And so A, uh, so what do we have? We have uh, F pin goes like this, uh, here to here. Step out that goes from here to here. And the annulus is the region that is bounded by, uh, 
by these two guys. So this sends the inside disk here. Um, so it sends f of d in of d. Uh, the outside disk is f out of d of the complement. And my annulus is the, I can identify it as the region of the complex uh, uh, of the complex plane, which is uh, the Riemann sphere minus this disk. And the parameterization is just given by, uh, so I need parameterization of the boundary. So a parameterization is just a map from the unit circle to the boundary. And the parameterization here is uh, canonical. It's just uh, the restriction of your conformal maps uh, to the unit circle. Uh, And so you always have a representative like this, and it is unique up to Mambus transformations. And so if you want to fix a uh, Mambus uh, gauge, well, you can ask that uh, it is in 0 to 0, uh, and out fixes infinity, and the uh, derivative of uh, it is uh, 1 for example. So you, can, you have three complex parameters that you can fix, uh, and you can fix them in canonical. Uh, right. And so I told you that this is a semi-group, so I need to tell you what is the identity element. The identity element actually does not uh, belong to this set, uh, so this is why I'm going to put inverted commas. Uh, so this would be the annulus parameterized by the identity of the unit disk and the identity of the complement of the unit disk. Uh, so this is really a degenerate annulus where the both boundaries go inside. Uh, so, yeah, it does not uh, strictly belong to this uh, set, but you can think of it as living on the boundary of that set. And so, what is the composition rule? Well, the composition rule is just the gluing, uh, the gluing of uh, a new line. And so, how do, you, how do you glue to a new line? Uh, so, you identify. Uh, so, if you do an analysis A1 to an analysis A2. Uh, so you identify the in boundary of uh, uh, the inside boundary of A2 uh, with the out uh, boundary of A1. And you can also draw a picture of how you could glue to an uh, So I have one here. A1 here, um, so here, here. So this would be F out two. F in one. F out one. We want to compute the model form uh, to the the canonical representative of this guy. Uh, so you want to uh, and you want to embed uh, these two guys into a single annulus. So we want to find a conformal map psi two that lives uh, that is defined here, and the conformal map psi one which is defined here. That sends you to the canonical representative of uh, the gluing of a two and a one. So now if a is uh, if the gluing uh, has uh, a representative in and out. You have to solve a problem uh, which is uh, I2 uh, composed with F out 2 is equal to F out on the, on the unit circle. Uh, psi 1 composed with F in 1 is equal to F in on the unit circle, and uh, f and the psi two composed with uh, f in two is equal to psi one composed with f out one on s one. And this you can always solve. It's uh, basically a problem of conformal welding. And so you can always solve it. So you can always construct uh, the gluing of these two uh, anulite. And 
so of course you can glue to any line, but you cannot go backwards. So this is why you have a semi-group structure uh, and not a full group structure. Is that clear? The... Uh, is it transitive? Uh, transitive. In the operation, the composition? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, yeah. It's a, so uh, it acts on itself. So well, actually, the, you're kind of anticipating the fact that with the following, because why we're interested in this is that this uh, semi group is going to act on fractional space, and this will, this action will be transitive on fractional space. So this is getting a bit ahead of it. Uh, right. And so, why, why did Siegel introduce this in the first place? So the semi group can be thought of a, it can be thought of a complexification of the, the complexification of the, the group of diffeomorphisms of the unit circle. Uh, and so in particular the, the D algebra. So it doesn't really have a Lie algebra, it would be a rather a cone uh, in the Lie algebra. Is the complex uh, with algebra. And it's generated by uh, you have what's called, so these are vector fields that are called Vn uh, in the basis. So the basis of vector field is given by these guys minus z to the n plus 1 dz, where z is the full coordinates in the, in the unit disk, uh, it's for n and z. And they have the commutation relation that we all know uh, is that Vn bracket Vm is n minus m, Vn plus m. And if you want to write it uh, in a uh, basis free um, way, this is just uh, V w prime minus uh, w uh, v prime w uh, v. Z. If uh, here I'm using V is equal to V, it is Z, and W is equal to W. So these are the commutation relations, and we have the cocycle. So the cocycle is giving you a central extension um, of that bit algebra, and it is given explicitly by omega of VW is 1 over 24 pi pi, is zero of W to full prime. Said. And so if you compute this on the basis, you recover the well-known formula uh, n cubed minus n over 12 delta n minus n. So you can think of, uh, of that uh, semi-group as exponentiating uh, the... Um, I'm lost by your ambition. Why do you write the cocycle with the same brackets as the computer? Sorry, it's should be an omega. Uh, okay. And so before I uh, move on to the next thing, uh, I want to introduce a nice sub semi group, um, which you can think of a, a Borel semi group. Uh, Of that space, which is basically this, the set of analysts that's out to the identity of uh, the complement of the unit disk. So here, uh, the composition rule, if you restrict yourself to that semi group, uh, the composition rule is very easy. Because what do you have? So we, we just have one map, which I get in, I can put in F. So it's going to uh, preserve. So since f out is the identity, it's sending the uh, outer boundary here. And so I can just think of uh, f as being here and sending that uh, the this, this domain inside the unit disk. And the way I compose is uh, very easy. Is uh, Then I, I just compose the two maps. So here on s plus, 
uh, the composition uh, G F is just G composed with F. So here this is uh, G F A F A Q. So on that subsidy group, the uh, the composition rule is uh, is is nicer. You don't have to so computing this problem in general is quite difficult. Uh, but here, you see the composition rule is just composition of conformal maps. Uh, so it's, uh, I think yeah. Oh, sorry. You you talk about the wind and uh, maybe that the Erasmus was started. How is it related to your first picture? Uh, so this so okay maybe let's restrict uh, focus on that subsidy group for one. So what is F? This is a conformal map of the unit disk. So how do you generate conformal maps of the unit disk? Uh, so do you you generate them by uh, holomorphic vector fields in the unit disk? So uh, this is a, so you get to... so it, basically this 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 F is a, you, you can think of it as a diffeomorphism of the disk. And what is what generates the diffeomorphism of the manifold? These are vector fields in that manifold. And so here, since we have conformal maps, they are generated by holomorphic vector fields on the disk. And actually, this was about to be my. Uh, um, this you are constructing it. Okay, but you, you, you will get some positive modes. Uh... So on on this uh, sub semi group, you get exactly the holomorphic vector fields. So you get positive modes. If you add. Uh, uh, an outside map, so this f out, you get also the negative ones. Okay, so, so you, you, you have to use a more general construction. Yes, okay. if you, if, yeah. But okay, so let me actually. I was going to talk about this later. It's a really good thing to talk about now. Uh, so why does this bit algebra generate uh, this semi group? It's in the following sense. Uh, so in the fact, well, first, okay, I will call. Uh, we say that uh, the vector field B. In the unit disk, uh, in Markovian, uh, if uh, the real part of Z bar of of Z uh, is strictly negative for all of Z in the unit circle, so what does it mean geometrically? It means that uh, on the unit circle, this vector field is pointing inwards. Because this is just the inner product of uh, these arrows with uh, this one. So it has to be negative, so it's therefore pointing inward. And so intu intuitively, at least, you can think that if you if you want to solve that uh, that equation, uh, if you want to solve this flow, dt ft equals b composed with ft, and f0 is the i of well, you can think that that's locally it's going to give you a conformal map with the first of the unit is, but it is actually true that it has a solution uh, in that sub semi group S plus uh, for all. This is defined for all times, and I, I want to call this, uh, and moreover, these, the domains FT of D uh, are decreasing. For the inclusion, and they actually decrease exponentially fast to uh, they decrease exponentially fast to a single point. Uh, the, the domain is shrinking to a point, which is actually the unit zero of that vector field. You have an assumption, but the assumption is just that uh, this Markovian yeah. condition. The V is holomorphic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, vector D means holomorphic vector fields in the unit disk. It's usually only defined it on the circle. It's, no, so it's defined in the disk. Uh, so if you want, if you want to write it in coordinates, it is uh, sum of V n to the n plus one d z uh, for n from minus one to infinity. Uh, and if it satisfies this condition, then you can solve this ODE. It will give you a solution in the space of conformal maps that preserve the disk. The family of domains decrease exponentially fast, and they shrink to a single point. Uh, yes, so it's, uh, it's exactly what I was saying. And um, yes, and so this means that you can also 
you can say that ft is uh, usually I will write that ft is exponential t. Okay. Can can you say what this point? It's the unique zero of uh, v. So you can show by an argument principle that v if it satisfies this, that it cannot have uh, more than one zero. Yeah, so it's it's exactly one zero. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, I mean, and usually what we do is to restrict ourselves to actually V of zero equals zero. You can always apply a Mobius transformation to uh, get to that fact here. So one example is that if you take it with that will be actually relevant in the people. Uh, if you take V of uh, V of Z is equal to minus Z dZ. So this is just uh, putting n equals zero here. Uh, this gives you F T of Z is equal to e to the minus T. So this is obviously shrinking to zero in uh, Right? And yes, and so okay, so now I have the this, the key geometric layer in this and why so I guess the idea of Segal Segal was to say, okay, I, I use this uh, I want to use this thing to construct CFTs. And so the reason why um, so see all the thing that you need to construct uh, from projective representations of X uh, and uh, so in the sequel, I will need to introduce the Hilbert space and Hilbert theory on which this will be this will, um, uh, be represented. And so this is still a very local picture. So when you do CFT, you're interested in uh, Riemann surfaces in general. And the reason why the semigroup of annuli is important in that uh, uh, for this is that it allows you to deform complex structures of arbitrary Riemann surfaces. Uh, so. So if you want to move inside that kind of space, so let's say you have a genus 2 Riemann surface, what you can do is to cut around some simple curves. curves. So here you would obtain uh, maybe fans and other simpler surfaces. And now what you do is to uh, insert uh, annuli here. So an annulus can look like this. Then you want to insert another annulus here. You glue according to boundary parameterization. And now glue. And the new Riemann surface that you get is still uh, the same genus. But now you have glued, you have a small annuli that are inside. So this would be the orange stuff. And this, this allows you to deform the complex structure. So uh, <clears throat> what you have hidden here is an action of that semi-group uh, on the touch of space of the surface. Uh, and and yeah, the idea is that you have a, and so in the algebraic uh, world, when you get a representation, you will have a representation this will be represented on your work space. So you have the bundle of control. Well, yet you will construct bundles of control blocks. Uh, and uh, the idea is that uh, uh, when you move inside the of space, the evolution of the block is going to be given by the exponential of uh, the Arsua algebra on this, which is another way of saying that the stress energy tensor defines a connection on the bundle of control blocks. And it's also another way of saying that the conformal board identity is whole. And so, uh, which is finally a way of saying that uh, when you move inside the space, uh, the semi group of annuli will be giving you the parallel transport of the connection uh, when you uh, pick an, uh, an actual path. So, so you're, ex you're computing the parallel transport of the connection when you do this. But this may be getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, I mean, you know, complex structure in the same Tashmuller space as uh, 
Il a une face. Hein. So the... Spacey, don't he fair uh, Yes, exactly. It's uh, Taj Mahal space is the universal cover of the modular space. So uh, when you look when you look at Taj Mahal space, you model by different morphisms that are uh, isotopic to the identity. And when you take modular space, you model by all different morphisms. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, and so, so, but I think that you have space but it's to coordinate for the front of the Yes. So you have to when you so how if you are describing something which is an evolution of this space, can you can you say how it what what what's the effect on the coordinates? So you have to when you when you if you want to do CFT, you have to be careful of which coordinates you choose because you want holomorphic coordinates. And maybe you are when you take pencil position, maybe you're referring to uh functional Nielsen coordinates, yes. which are not holomorphic. So this is why you have to be very careful. But what you what we use so the advantage of Pench and Nielsen is that they are global coordinates. This is nice. Uh, but here, what we like to use is these what we call plumbing coordinates. So if you pick your if you pick uh, Pence decomposition of the surface, then you can glue uh, straight annulus like this. So one that is generated by this uh, uh, V zero earlier. So one that looks just like this. Uh, so here, so the, so you know, f in would be expansion minus t z, and f out would be the identity. So this is really a even like a straight one, and so you can just do it, uh, and you can also rotate it, kind of like the functional descent coordinates. And this gives you, um, this gives you analytic coordinates. So, uh, so actually, it's maybe better to write q. So q would be a complex num uh, number in the unit disk. Uh, this defines an address, which has modulus q. And you can glue it here, for example. And this will give you local analytic coordinates on tactional space. Which are more big, but not global. Yeah, you were thinking about the fact that can do deformation, so it's uh, just the, the yes. So here it, it's, it's. I mean, I can show you this again. So you have two surfaces, uh, and then you glue an analysis here of modulus q, and this gives you a coordinate. You can do. You can play the same game here. Uh, cut and glue an analysis of modulus q. Of maybe Q2, so this would be Q1, Q2. So you, here, if you do a pencil decomposition, you get 3G minus 3 uh, curves and 2G minus 2 pairs of pens. You get 3G minus 3 uh, parameters Q like this that give you a system of local coordinates on the actual space. And they, these are usually so called plumbing coordinates. But to be honest, uh, it's already half past and. Uh, okay. I don't think I will have time to go to the geometric question. I will probably just have time to talk about the semi-group. Uh, so we can maybe discuss more about the geometric stuff later. But uh, yeah, I think time constraints. I think that I will only have time to talk about the panel line. Okay, so we have this uh, we have this semi group, and now I want a representation of it. Um, and so we have two we have two representation. We have a free field representation, and then we want and then later we'll go from free field to Julian. The free field might seem uh, a bit trivial, but there's actually a lot of uh, a lot of the ideas are already there, and I think it's nice. Uh, so, so I first need to introduce the Hilbert space that we're interested in. Uh, so the Hilbert space will basically be the the bosonic top space. Uh, but for the purpose of uh, this probabilistic approach, uh, I'm going to use a specific uh, realization of it. So I need a probability measure, uh, which is the Of, um, 
Le lien from the field. Send to a different field. Five on the circle. The real values. Uh, and that has this, that has a, that is logarithmically correlated. And so if you want to, you can just, maybe the easiest, easiest way to think of this is as a Fourier series. So it's a random Fourier series uh, where the mode, uh, the nth mode is a Galpin, the complex Galpin. And phi minus n is phi in bar. And you can also, I will also use the harmonic extension of this field, which is the sum from 1 to infinity of uh, phi n that to the n plus phi minus n z bar to the n. Uh, and this is for this. Okay, so we have this random field that lives on the unit circle. Algorithm so it's actually a distribution, not a function. Uh, but you can make sense of this random Fourier series. Okay, so of course we have a. Um, um, yes, no, so H. Which be the, the Hilbert space is L2 of uh, dt, enter this measure, and dc is the back measure. Yes? P of this one, where did I? Ah, uh, it's harmonic extension. So, so you have a field that lives on the circle, and you extend it to the unit disk. Uh, you're, you're adding uh, negative powers of. Uh, oh, no, it's bar. Yes. Ah, okay. And so yeah, so now you can see that I haven't talked about the zero mode here because it's independent from zero, and I sample uh, the zero mode from the back measure. Uh, and so we have a Heisenberg algebra, uh, which I write a. So this is this one is canonical. Uh, you have two copies actually of, uh, of this Heisenberg algebra. Uh, it's given explicitly like this. Uh, so you take the derivative in the nth mode for n positive. And you take uh, the adjoint of this guy uh, minus two n by n. So you can check that the um, this commutation relation holds, uh, right? And we have also this. Uh, so Sylvain was telling me at lunch that maybe it's incorrect to call it the Sugawa uh, construction. Uh, so maybe the second post construction, I don't know. Uh, but you get you have a representation of the the answer algebra. Uh, There. And they say this file, uh, this this file, the, the commutation relations of the also. So this is, uh, I guess everybody knows this, but um, it's just for reference that I'm going to uh, be using this. And so C is 1 plus 6 u square. And Q is a, a parameter. Uh, 
uh, okay. And I will also I forgot to introduce one uh, field, which is the JFAB free field in the unit circle uh, XP that has this uh, covariance. So it's also a central graphing field in the unit disk with a uh, covariance structure, which is the mean function of the J-shell attention in the unit disk. And this allows me to construct the whole field in the unit disk, which is the j shell free field plus the harmonic extension of the boundary field. Okay, so now I want to actually uh, find a representation of the semi-group. And so for this, I need to take an element of the semi-group and construct an operator acting on the input space. So I'm going to start with the, uh, this positive, uh, this void semi-group I introduced. Uh, so for uh, f in the uh, sub group I defined an operator uh, cf is zero. So the zero always stands for the free field, and then when you go to the real, uh, zero. So when it acts on an element f of the Hilbert space, so this gives me a new functional of the field, and uh, which is given in with the following formula. So it's a bit of computation. So I'm going to unpack this formula in a bit. It means that I condition on the boundary field. So you, know you only use K and never A. Uh, yeah. Actually, I use both because uh, when we do probability, we are kind of restricted to the real domain. So we always have uh, some of the a n and a n tilde. So we also have a, I didn't write it, but we also have an n tilde, of course. And uh, since we are in the real sector, so you can think of these as holomorphic and anti-holomorphic parts of stuff. And so whenever we do construct probabilistic objects, we always have some of the, uh, so we'll have a real part of the uh, So and then you always have to extract a holomorphic quantity from this. This is why you get absolute values. Yes. So typically, yes, uh, you would like to have it without modulus uh, at some point. Um, but then you see that you will be also need to consider the universal cover of the any group because if you want to exponentiate, you want to look uh, at the fractional power of f prime of zero. Have to uh, be in the universal. Uh, right. And so, yeah, and so maybe just let me unpack a bit what we're doing. So, we have this uh, F, which sends the unit disk uh, to a domain inside the unit disk. So, here I have the field uh, X. So, it's the case that we field plus the harmonic extension. And so when I pull it back, uh, so the orange curve, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the value of the field on the orange curve, and I'm pulling it back here on the unit circle with the conform uh, map. And I'm adding this funny uh, Q log f prime over f uh, quantity. Uh -huh. So what, what am I doing actually? So I, I'm, you can think of uh, phi as the, this, this boundary field as being some initial starting point and having some random environment in the unit disk that you're exploring uh, using your uh, f. Uh, and so uh, when you're exploring, you are uh, constructing, constructing a random process and uh, this conformal uh, map allows you to bring it back, back to the unit circle. Uh, and this gives you, uh, this gives you a way sort of sort of way of exploring the randomness in the in this disk. Uh, and this 
picture becomes even more uh, relevant if I introduce some dynamics. So I told you earlier that you can. Yes. So for each little f, SDI lives in the space of bounded operators. Bounded okay, so then your the f is an is a L2 is an L2 f. So what is a? This is a space of functionals of uh, fields on the circle. So it takes an input field on the circle. It it's short. Uh, and when you write C plus five, it's a way to separate the uh, the C the whole field is C plus five. The way we to view an element to write this. Yes. Then and then okay and the right. So think of it as the so when you solve the heat equation on R, you can solve it using run in motion, right? And the way you would solve it is by saying that. Uh, so if you want to solve e to the t Laplacian on the real line uh, f of x, you can write it as expected value of ground in motion started from f from x uh, taken as also. You should view it as the analog. Uh... Yes. Yeah, so here, I, this, this is exactly what it is because I should actually it would be even more relevant if I put a c here because uh, c really behaves like a ground in motion when you do this flow. While the modes of phi behave like a perfectly rhythmic process, and so this and so here you can think of uh, solving the heat equation on R, but you're also adding all the modes of phi. Uh, you know, yes, sorry. They are working uh, on the floor. So yeah, just to say this is this is a way of solving the heat equation on R using Brownian motion, and I'm basically doing the same here, except I have infinitely many random variables instead of just one. And now you can also think what is the analog of this Laplacian here in my model, and this is what I'm about to introduce. Is so you so here Laplacian is a generator of running motion. Now I want to compute generators of these sort of things. Okay. So maybe just here in five minutes when I actually write it again. So so if you take ft equals the flow of a holomorphic vector field, uh, then you you can show that t ft is actually a one parameter semi group. Uh, so hv zero it's a non bounded operator. Non -bounded operator on the Hilbert space. And actually, this is how you recover the Sugawa operators, because H0 is LB0 plus L tilde of B0. And my notation is that, uh, if, uh, so L, LB is the sum of uh, BN, LN. When I write uh, B on the canonical basis. So you recover. So you see that the generators of these processes are exactly given by the uh, Sugawa operators. Um, right. Another way of writing it is that L v is H v minus I H I v two and L v tilde is H. Yes. Over two. So the LV0 and L tilde V0 are really the holomorphic and anti holomorphic parts of the so it's complex linear in B and complex anti linear in B. Okay. Right, so we have a we have a way to understand. The, so this gives us the way to understand the Sugawa. Well, it's a little bit late, right? So I, I will just uh, see how you can go from the. Uh, in any case, I will have to cut at some points, but uh, I'll just talk about the UV uh, representation and then. Yeah. 
I mean, I can stop at five past, right? This when I started. Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, right, so now let's talk about the UVN representation. Uh, so, Kahan <clears throat> uh, told us that, uh, so first of all, the field is not correlated, so it's not a function, it's a function, but Kahan told us that there is a way to regularize uh, this. This thing and it converted as epsilon goes to zero uh, to uh, a random measure in the unit uh, measure uh, where x epsilon uh, is the regularization at, the, at, the, at, scale, at scale epsilon. And so I can just use this as a black box uh, to construct the UV representation. And so this uh, and this, yes, and so the UV potential, the UV potential is uh, the, the exponential of the field. And so by a Feynman catch formula, uh, we can actually define some op other operators. So. Uh, I define now the UV operator, which is going to be exactly the same formula, except that now I will add uh, the potential. So the first part is exactly the same, and now I add. Uh, uh, I add the mass of my uh, chaos measure uh, at the potential, uh, and so so now you can say, you can you can think okay what what happens when I take f to be close to the identity. So if I take a flow ft and I differentiate at t equals zero, well, what you pick up here is the is the mass of that annulus in the small uh, in the small strip, the small strip. And so the guess is that um, you will get an operator of the form uh, free field plus potential. So this is true. So uh, the so what we proved is that uh, for uh, ft is equal to tf is equal to TV. So this is also the one parameter semi group. Uh, for some operator of H, HV, which is also unbounded. Uh, and if the next expression, uh, well, you can also write it HV is equal to H plus LV tilde. And LV is um, LV0 plus mu over 2. Uh, yes, so mu is uh, another parameter. It's 1, let me just say it to 1. Uh, integral from 0 to 2 pi, e to the gamma. Uh, actually, no, no. Uh, right, so you have to work a bit to make sense of this operator again, because here you have some non-trivial quantity. But it does make, you, we can make sense of it. Uh, and just let me mention that this formula had been written by Keschner in the beginning of the 2000s. And so we recovered this formula that had been written before. What we can do also is to compute the commutation relation. So here we are talking about talking about unbounded operators on the Hilbert space. So in the case of the free field operators, it was relatively easy because they all had a common domain, which was dense, and that they preserved the space of polynomials 
uh, in the modes of the field. But so here, it's very difficult to think of a domain, uh, of a common domain that they would have, that they would preserve. Uh, so it's actually not the, the very uh, a difficult question to prove the commutation relations uh, of this thing. So how we do it is to prove them in a sort of a, uh, uh, in an indirect way. Uh, in the, so using uh, scattering theory. Uh, so because there is one important operator here, which is the Hamiltonian. This is H uh, that you get when you use the vector field minus Z dz. So we had seen that this vector field generates just uh, shrinking circles uh, exponentially fast. Uh, and this is uh, uh, this is self adjoint. Uh, and the spectral theory has been uh, done by Yarmou, Kuyanan, Kuyanan, Rod, and Vargas. So the spectrum is. Is Q plus the real line, F plus I times R plus. So here is the spectrum. And it has the, yeah, so actually the spectrum indexes all the representations, so the actual representations in the, uh, well, in the spectrum. So more precisely, uh, you can write the Hilbert space as an integ direct integral. Uh, yeah, so all representations, which are their modules of this is gamma with the uh, weight with weight square of p square over four. Uh, so the spectral theory of this Hamiltonian allows you to write the Hilbert space like this, uh, and uh, the the eigenstates are indexed by um, uh, elements on the on the line here. But it turns out that they have an analytic extension to the whole plane. In particular, they have uh, so we have people psi alpha uh, these eigenstates. So they they are they live here, but they extend analytically to the whole plane. Uh, into generalized eigenstates that live in weighted in the weighted Hilbert spaces, uh, and so here in particular, there is what we call the probabilistic region, where you can find explicit uh, expressions for them. So here, the eyes is a highest weight representation uh, with this weight, uh, and for instance, in this this region, the highest weight vector. Uh, for alpha uh, uh, in the neighborhood of minus infinity, uh, psi alpha of psi has this explicit expression so you have an explicit expression using the Gaussian box of state chaos matter and gamma. And this, uh, this is a gen generalized plane wave, which is the free field uh, generalized eigenstates. And so the interesting thing is that in this probabilistic region, actually, the way, um, I mean, in general, how you construct these new mid eigenstates is uh, by means of the flow of, uh, it's by means of the sort of question, what we call the question operator. And so uh, this is basically saying you're sending free field uh, eigenstates to a new mean eigenstates. And the free field eigenstates are very simple. They are polynomials. Uh, polynomial in, in phi. And this is complicated. This is a complicated expression. 
but the nice thing is that in this probabilistic region, uh, you can think of this Poisson operator as being <coughs> limit as t goes to infinity of e to the minus th e to the th0, uh, where e to the th0 is the free field Hamiltonian. So L0 versus L0 tilde. And so you have a, if you look at the long-term asymptotic of the heat equation, uh, this will basically converge when you renormalize re properly to a uh, uv state. But this only holds true in that region. Uh, and so if you want to learn things about the spectrum, you have to first compute things in the probabilistic region and then uh, go back to the spectrum by means of analytic continuation. So here this is analytic in our And the region of analyticity is really in the, it's in a connected region that contains um, both this region and. And so I will just uh, end here, I guess, to conclude on the, how we prove the, uh, the computation relations for these guys. Uh, uh, the commutation relations, we're basically saying that this Poisson operator is intertwining the, uh, the two representations. Uh, so we show that In the probabilistic region, um, so Ln composed with P is equal to P composed with Ln zero in a suitable sense. Uh, plus uh, extension. Uh, to the spectrum. Uh, and so, uh, yes, and so this gives you, uh, this, this is basically tell, telling you that this Poisson operator intertwines the two representations, so you literally have the same uh, representation. Uh, so to conclude, let, let me just maybe mention one work in progress. And so, uh, so I won't have time to talk about the probable blocks, how we, uh, how we study them using this, but I should mention also the, the this Poisson operator. It's, it has been constructed only for values of alpha that tend to minus infinity and that get even worse and worse. So the domain where the rep this representation holds, uh, it gets smaller and smaller uh, with the level. So uh, when you go deep inside the module, it gets smaller and smaller, and eventually it shrinks to, to the empty set, actually. But so with, uh, uh, with Bao Jun Wu, who is uh, a student of Rémy uh, we we are working on, uh, on extending the domain of validity of this, uh, uh, the Poisson operator. Uh, to all alpha. And one, one, uh, one uh, thing that comes out of this is that uh, 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 we can show, so, I mean, we can actually construct the degenerate module. So what are the degenerate modules? They are the B alphas here when alpha is uh, in the catch table. So when you have alpha in the catch table, so first actually in the, this work with Colin, uh, Antti, uh, Rémy, and Vincent, we construct these modules for all values of alpha except for the de degenerate ones, precisely because the fact that they are degenerate makes it difficult. Uh, but so with Baojun, we find a way to extend the Poisson operator. 
constructed the generate modules, and this implies that um, you have non-trivial relations in these modules, and this allows us to uh, establish the DBZ equations in all generality uh, on for all conformal blocks on for any value in the arbitrary genus, so this gives us PDs on page middle space. And so the, yeah, because if you just stare at the expression for these uh, new real states, it's uh, not clear at all that for the degenerate weights you would get non-trivial relations uh, in the module. Uh, but we, yeah, we did find a way to extend the Poisson operator, which allows us to show this in the. And yeah, I think uh, my time is up, so I have to stop here. So if you have any questions. So, yeah, well, uh, very like a global question. But a, a few years ago, it seems that some of your courses uh, claimed that they have given a uh, gross probability. Construction of UV theory, including probably uh, proving that one knows something. But now, it looks like you are giving what? Different construction? Uh, so, the, uh, right, so they proved, so the, they, there were two papers on the conformal construct. Uh, the first one was for the four points function on the sphere. Uh, and so, they one corollary is that the conformal blocks converge for almost every P, for almost every point. Mm -hmm. They had the second paper where there is conformal blocks on all Riemann surfaces. But the thing is, what is not proved in that paper is that the blocks are well defined on the field of space because they uh, do depend on the choice of density composition. Not on the top, they, what you want is that the um, it only depends on the topological. Uh, so, I mean, so okay, let me make a drawing. So the way they could construct the blocks is so they have a surface and they cut two pair of fence. But a priori, it depends on the choice of curves that you have in the pair of fence. So it's not clear that you are even, uh, so that if, if I move a bit the curve here, it's not clear that I get the same conformal box. So uh, it's not supposed to depend on the choice of curve uh, on the embeddings. If you, it's, only depend, it's only supposed to depend on the complex structure of the surface, not on the choice of curves in the composition. So this is actually what we're doing at the moment, finalizing, uh, hopefully, is to show that. Uh, using this, so when you change the curve, actually, what you're doing, uh, at least in some cases, is, is cutting uh, the surface into pens and then doing some aniline. So you want to show that if you uh, you want to use the semi group that's constructed, uh, show that, okay, when I move the curve, when I move a bit the curve here, it's basically applying an, a Virasso operator uh, on the boundary here, but it's also applying the a joint operator in that direction, and so the two contributions are going to cancel out. Yeah. So we use this the semi group, uh, so that does not depend on the choice of curves, and that we have a well defined analytic quantity on the space. space. The, the current bootstrap paper, it's not, uh, it's not on the four points uh, for the four point function on the sphere. You have this global coordinate thing that, uh, and actually they use they use the unit circle as a way to cut the so they don't study deformations. So they, this whole thing is allows us to study deformations and show that we have a well defined intrinsic quantity on the space. One thing that we want to do in the future also, but that uh, is quite complicated, is that uh, to study the monodromy of the blocks. So uh, one, once you know they, once we know they are defined on the of space. We want to understand what is the, uh, how they vary when you apply a uh, mapping class. So what is the monotropy with the mapping class rule? Because they are not going to, they are going to be multi-valued on the moduli space. Uh, but the difficult question to understand uh, is that is more or less the question. I have a very nice when, when you write a formula like x exponential th exponential minus. Yes. Usually it's it's kind of way to do some perturbative theory. Uh, is, is this something which you 
so here I'm, I'm really using it in the sense of the Hido Yoshida theorem. So I have a one parameter semi group of contraction. Uh, so, so it's the it's a good kind of rough expansion. Uh, not, not really, it's really just the, the flow of uh, uh, yeah, it's the it's a one parameter semi group of operators. So, yeah, it's, uh, H is by the way, H is, is H is the Uville Hamiltonian, H0 the free Hamiltonian. Yeah, so you have the H and H0. Uh, H0 is what, so we write H0 for the free field Hamiltonian. So the free field Hamiltonian is basically, uh, so it's, uh, you know, a Laplace operator on the zero mode plus harmonic oscillators in the other modes. So this you can exponentiate, it generates a, uh, yeah, a semi group. Um, very easy to, to solve it. To compute six, all the things. Uh, when you do UV, you have to add the potential. It's not always, it's not clear that it generates a semi group, you have to prove this. And then we generalize this picture to all uh, possible deformations of the disk. So using these flows of conformal transformations. Is it whatever, numerically? Is it something which can be numerically? Uh, so what, what would you like to compute, for example? Uh, the evolution. Uh, yeah, so in the evolution, you see that you have what's involved is the uh, mass of the Gaussian multiplicative chaos me in measure in the annulus. So if you want to uh, simulate this, you can do Monte Carlo. So you can sample this uh, random measure uh, and compute uh, its mass, actually. Because there are some formulas for the, this, the value of this measure on the circle. Yeah, you know, some la direction du centre de Paris Saclay vous informe de la fin de l'exercice de la fin du centre du PCDL. La direction du centre de Paris Saclay vous informe de la fin de l'exercice de la fin du centre du PCDL. So, yeah, I guess if you want to do numerics, you could. Um... Yes, you could you could sample this measure and see. Uh, yeah. So first you, you you can simulate the flow. This is easy to do, and then you can add the the randomness on top. Right. Cool. Uh, and I, one thing that we can do also, I didn't mention it, but we can compute the the kernels of these operators. So that uh, so I compute the operators, but you can yes, they have a kernel. So you propagator. Yes, this is exactly a propagator. And you can write it as a convolution of a, a computed function. I didn't write the formula because it, it involves a lot of notation with the, uh, ge geometric operators like the Zeichner to the man map and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's a lot of notations that I didn't want to introduce, but we can construct the we can construct the kernel uh, compute the kernel. You're, you're decomposing correlation functions into conformal blocks. I mean, you have a rather different starting point from the job. I mean, finding the probabilistic instruction. So, could, couldn't it lead to some other ways of computing correlation functions that may be like, easier or at least different than conformal blocks? Uh, well, I think I want to say that the conformal blocks are the easiest way to compute the correlation functions, no? Because the, in the end, they are an exponential. So what, you, what we do is we, we cut into a pair of pens. To a pair of pens, we can associate the same. So I, I was associating operators to annuli, but we can associate operators to pairs of pens also exactly in the same sort of way. And then you look at the spectral decomposition of this uh, operator using the, the spectral uh, decomposition of the operator, of the Hamiltonian. And then when you glue the, um, the spectral detection of these operators, you get the conformal blocks. So we can sort that. And so it's kind of the simplest way, I'd say, to get into it. It's an exponential. That's, I think this is a nice thing about it, because it's uh, expressing conformal blocks as just an exponential. <coughs> uh, but, uh, maybe I'm not the answer you were looking for. 